Greetings, unsettled souls. Hey, Sam. And welcome to the 4th of July terror. Uh, the 4th of July terror show. She's giving me a bomb. It's an awful long wick, Chris. Are you sure that's a bomb? I, I, I'm, I was told by the person to give that to you. I don't know. I felt, I, felt, I felt like Peter Sellers. No, I don't think I don't think it's a bum. Here. Ah. All right, friends. There's your bit of levity for the Fourth of July show. Indeed. That'll make it sound even clearer. Yes, friends, for the Fourth of July show. Greetings and uh, welcome aboard. A little bit of levity because the news we have is is less than good news. Actually, uh, I'm going to be doing a Fourth of July work on the Media Speak Saturday. I'll be going live on MediaSpeaks.com. Um, we do have some actual real terror in the world. The reason I'm going to go over this quickly is twofold. Uh, first of all, as I do commentary for the Media Speaks, um, I think it's important to note that if the government predicts this every year, my mother, God rest her soul, no matter where you were going to go, she used to always tell you it was going to rain. Always. She said it's going to rain. Sooner or later, it would in fact rain. And she would say, I told you it was going to rain. If they predict terror on each and every holiday that we have, then sooner or later, they're going to be right. It's just a matter of numbers. The other thing is, I think if I go into this too long, then once July 15th comes up, nobody's going to want to watch the show because they're going to think all the news is dated. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because um, the news on here is a lot to do with Hillary Clinton and a lot to do with uh, many things that are going to be important after July 15th. So we're going to skate right into this ever so quickly. Steve Watson, Prison Planet, Terror Panic, representative says New York City officials expecting a dirty bomb attack on July 4th. Now, the, one of the reasons I have to go over this is because I'm like Joe Nuclear. Uh, I'm not a physicist, but I'm, I'm not an idiot. I know how to read the works of physicists, and uh, we cover them often here in things like Fukushima. Chernobyl, all of that. Well, a dirty bomb, for those of you that maybe just tuned in, it's when you take radioactive material, that would be material that will give you cancer, that will give you uh, heart trouble, that will sicken you throughout your life. Putting radioactive material on pretty much a glorified grenade is something that goes kaboom and uh, spewing it over an area. If you did something like that in, a, uh, in New York City, in downtown Manhattan, it would be a disaster. Uh, fortunately, a lot of these uh, substances can be detected, but uh, not all of them. I mean, for instance, if you look at satellite imagery, you can tell where the x-ray machines are in hospitals and clinics and whatnot because it gives off a glow. Well, um, at small doses, sometimes that can be rather hard to pick up. There is a background radiation, for instance, uh, coming off of this monitor that doesn't want to work today, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, it says, New York Congressman Peter King was spreading more of his brand of fear on Fox News last night, telling viewers that officials in New York are worried that there's going to be a dirty bomb attack this weekend. Uh, while Prison Planet is downplaying this a little more than I am, I will be the first to say that the government has, uh, most of the terror that we see are uh, patsies, that the government walked into this. Um... But I think we would be remiss to, to not pay attention to it. I don't think you should not go out on the 4th of July. That'd be dumb. I'm going out on the 4th of July. Uh, I'm going out Friday. I'm probably going to be staying up until the sun comes up. And then I'm having a little get-together Saturday night. And I may be, uh, I'm going to be running sound at Buzzbin. Free shout-out to Noses. I'm going to be doing his uh, loops and whatnot. So, no, I'm not staying home on the 4th of July. But as your host, I will let you know what the chatter is. How's that? It says, speaking to Megyn Kelly regarding the heightened chatter of a possible terrorist attack during the 4th of July celebrations, King took things to a whole new level. Saying he's never seen the level of concern, King stated, you wouldn't see the nuclear explosion detonation devices being used the way they are if this were just routine warning. Did you just say nuclear? Kelly responded. Yes, that's the big concern in New York, King replied, adding that nuclear explosives, the dirty bomb, that's why so much money is put into explosive detection services. King, chairman of the Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, loves to perpetuate the idea that there are terrorists around every corner in U.S. cities trying to set off nuclear bombs, which, of course, isn't true. But 
there are lots of people that are, in fact, trying to do things like this, not, not to the level that the government says, but definitely the 4th of July would be a day that I could imagine they would want to try pull off something sadistic. Um, not so much the suitcase nukes. I know a lot of you are going to ask about that in the comment line. Not so much the suitcase nukes, I say, because um, suitcase nukes are very hard to maintain. They have to be kept at a certain temperature. They're heavy. They're clunky. It's not just this little briefcase like you see in the comic strips or something. Uh, suitcase nukes are very hard. A dirty bomb, though, if you shielded it right, right in lead, could be uh, quite a nightmare, actually. Um, it's true, it says in this article, that he's obsessed with stripping away freedoms and rights in favor of more aggressive surveillance, and there's links to prove it. Um, he previously referred to Edward Snowden as a terrorist appeaser and a traitor, so, I mean, a lot of what he says has very little bearing on me because he's lost credibility with me just by attacking Snowden. However, um, be aware, always be aware of what's going on around you. That's, that's your advice for the day, especially, I guess, if you're going to be in New York, um, look around. If, uh, if you do see an explosion, here's some correct views for you. Um, do not touch your hands or your mouth. But it burr. Don't touch your hands or your mouth because you'll get it into your eye or you'll get it into your saliva. Or if you like to keep playing with your nose like I am now that I filled sulfur in the room with my uh, firework. If you do those sorts of things, then you are breathing in the radionuclides that could be in the explosion. You're putting it into your eye, you're putting it into your mouth, away from it, away from it. Don't drink any water at the scene. Get out of the area as quickly as possible. Do not eat anything, do not drink anything, do not do anything of the sort if there was to be an explosion. Don't do it. Also, if a car bomb goes off or some kind of explosion, when you're rushing over to help other people, I'm not going to say don't help other people, but keep in mind that one of the things terrorists like to do, as I hold up these sticker junkie stickers here, proud sponsor of the show, sticker junkie, this car blows up here. Boom. So you come running to help, and you're helping somebody over here. Boom. The other one goes off. They love to do that. They love to do that. Um, two, two free uh, advices here on the correct views. Check this out, InfoWars uh, report, FBI agents telling friends and family to avoid 4th of July celebrations. Again, it's, it's more chatter than normal. Is it more hype than normal, or is it actual, actual and factual? I don't know, because the government has lied to us in copious amounts so often that you're afraid to really listen to it. It's like the boy that cried wolf. But then again... Sooner or later, there is going to be a wolf. You, you can't pretend there's no wolves just because you have a boy that's crying at all the time. I think we go too far in the other direction with that analogy. That's my point. It says, following warnings uh, by the federal government that terrorists may be planning to attack Independence Day events, FBI agents are reportedly telling friends and family members to avoid major 4th of July celebrations. Well, I'm going to be on stage, so that's not going to be a, an option for me. Gateway Pundit's Jim Hoft cites an inside source who told him that FBI agents are telling their friends and family members to avoid official celebrations. He also claims, what is an official celebration, by the way? Would it be like the, uh, the city-sponsored parade kind of thing? Hoft also claims that the FBI has canceled vacation for all of its agents during the weekend. Um, granted, there's always some agents left on, we know that. But the fact that they've all got theirs canceled is interesting. That's not some, that's, that's a morale killer. The FBI, uh, I don't think, would necessarily kill the morale of their own department. you got to think, they have families, they have vacations too. They wouldn't have done that and destroyed morale if they thought nothing was here. So it's worthy of listening to. Since earlier this week, Department of Homeland Security and FBI agents issued alerts to local law enforcement and urged Americans to remain vigilant this 4th of July weekend. No, why don't you just choose not to be diligent, you know, just on that one day. Former CIA Director Deputy Michael Morrell said also Monday that he wouldn't be surprised if there's a terrorist attack during the 4th of July weekend. This one really resonates me with me for two reasons, Morrell said. One is that there have been about 50 people in the last 12 months who have been arrested in the U.S. for being radicalized by ISIS, wanting to go there or wanting to conduct an attack here. So there's a lot of people out there who are seeing themselves as aligned with ISIS, number one. 
And uh, might I add that if we have caught 50 people without doing all the spying, we just did it the regular legal way, it seems to me that we don't need to do all of this spying. That we do have too much hay to find the needle in, to use the Ron Paul analogy. It says, number two, you have this ISIS call to arms during Ramadan, Morel said. We are right in the middle of their holy day of Ramadan. And a call to arms, conduct attacks against our enemies, so I'm worried about this. What if, what if Christians said, all right, it's a call to action on Christmas Day. We want you to go and slaughter ISIS members. Not, I'm all for slaughtering ISIS members on just about any day. But my point is, and uh, part of that's facetious, um, my point is, why in the world would anybody be attracted to this mindset? What if Jews said, you know what, we're going to celebrate Passover by killing ISIS members, like, like it was part of the celebration. I'm not saying that Israel doesn't have a right to defend itself. I'm saying that if, hypothetically, they were to say something like this, you would find it to be very sick and very twisted. And yet, people want to, I'm going to join ISIS and prove what a badass I am. They want to kill people during the religious holiday of Islam. You can see how sick they are. Fox News also reported that the FBI is setting up command centers in all of its 56 field offices across the country to monitor potential terror threats. ISIS supporters have recently intensified their social media propaganda campaign with 100,000 tweets a day urging mass murder. So, friends, that, there it is. There's your update. I'm not going to do any more. I've done it uh, about 10 minutes. You have the knowledge. Again, do I think that it's going to be as bad as they keep saying it, it is? No, but it could be. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say, I think, is that it could be bad, and now you do have the facts. Now we're going to move on so that when people watch this on July the 18th, it's still relevant. How about that? Uh, Nationalreview.com. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Proof. Despite denials, White House aides knew about Hillary's private email accounts. And for those of you that are on the fence with this or not understanding why it matters, it takes the oversight away. You can't have oversight and responsibility for things like the bombing that she allowed to happen in Iraq, or Iraq, excuse me, Libya. You cannot allow that kind of thing to happen because you you can't hold anybody accountable if you don't know where the emails are going. They have to go to a certain place, and there are people that have to see them. That is why you can hear Nixon tapes about him calling, and it's not very politically correct. He calls uh, the Bohemian Grove the faggiest place he's ever been to. Why do you think he was speaking like that? Because you're not allowed to hide what you're doing and how you're conducting business when you work for the people the people get accountability from you. Okay, we, we are not to be constantly spied on. The Constitution says that they are to be held accountable at all times. We are to be held accountable when there is a reasonable suspicion. This was something you would expect in a kingdom or a monarchy, not to mention the ability to have it hacked. That's a whole other topic. New Hillary Clinton emails, now that we know why it mattered, released late Thursday, late Tuesday night, this is dated the 30th of June, by the Senate Department reveal that, despite denials to the contrary, top Obama administration officials were aware within the first nine months of President Obama's first term of then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's use of private email server to conduct government business. They've been saying they didn't know, they didn't know, they didn't know. Well, look at this. The White House has said has not said when President Obama and his lieutenants first learned of Clinton's use of a private email server, noting only that they became aware of it in August of 2014, and there's a link in the article to verify this. And that was after Republican lawmakers got hold of the information that it could become a political problem. But the emails from 2009 show that the Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, that would be Chicago's mayor, uh, is crooked as a dog's hind leg, and senior advisor, advisor David Axelrod understood at the time that Clinton used a private email account and server for official business. And again, we just ex explained why that's a very big deal. Indeed, top officials were forced to explicitly ask Clinton aides for her email address. Now, let me play devil's advocate here. 
maybe you're listening to this and you're saying, Sam, I like Hillary Clinton and you're not going to sway me on that. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. We don't need to part as enemies. Hear me out. If you allow this to happen, then would you have trusted George Bush and his Secretary of State? Would you have trusted him with it? Because if Obama can do it, and I'm assuming if you if you like Hillary Clinton, then you don't like Jeb Bush. What if Jeb Bush wins? Well, not this election cycle. What if he wins? God forbid. What if he wins? Do you, you you trust you trust Jeb Bush to be able to do this? Because you can't give it to the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton without giving it to every president that comes afterwards. It's an exact attack. It's the exact opposite of what the Constitution is even there for. Axelrod wants your emails, read the subject line of an email from Clinton's Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills in June 8th of 09. Clinton replied that her email account, hdr22 at clintonemail.com, can you send it to him or do you want me to, she asked. Does he know I can't look at it all day so he needs to contact me through you or Huma or Lauren during work hours? But despite this, in 2009's email, Axelrod told MSNBC host Mike Brzezinski on June 17th this year, that this year, that he was unaware that Clinton was using a private email address and server in government capacity. I was there. I was the senior advisor. I didn't know that, he said. I might have asked a few questions about that. Well, we know now that he lied. We have, I mean, I'm looking. If my screen worked, you'd be looking at it too. I am looking at the proof right here. Go to the article at National Review if you're angry at me because I'm just giving you facts. A top Emanuel aide also asked Clinton's team for her private email account on September 5th of 2009. That would be after June for you Usher fans. The secretary and Rom were speaking and she just asked him to email her, wrote Emanuel's assistant. Can you send me her address, please? Mills deferred to Clinton. Do you want him to have your email, she asked. Clinton agreed, replying from a different private account, this time hrod17 at clintonemail.com. Oh yeah, it's easier to set up your own server than to use the one that's already there. No, it's not. I have a degree in IMT. Setting up a server is harder than using a server that already exists. Common sense will get you through the day. Future Obama consul John Podesta was also aware of Hillary's private email server. That's, a, that's three people now that knew. Tried, tried you a couple of days ago, but email bounced back. He wrote to hrod17 at clintonemail.com on June 25th of 09. Neera Tandon, president of the Center for American Progress, says this is the right one. How are you doing? Podesta was not in the White House when the email was sent, so it's unclear whether he understood that Clinton's account was being used for official purposes. They knew. Okay? They knew. So stop covering for her. You're going to have to admit, even if you're going to vote Democrat. You know what? I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you voted Libertarian, Constitutionalist, uh, even Rand Paul. Fine. Vote Democrat. But for the love of God, at least pick one that hasn't already tried to set up a kingdom the first time. Okay? Vote Democrat if you must. Why? Why do you have to pick somebody that incredibly evil? Guys, we've got two stories to get to. Do not go. The dumdy of the day is, I promise you, the dumdy of the day you want to hear, don't go, you will regret it. I just want you to know that, as I said earlier, as shows brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Go to StickerJunkie.com. I made these passing time stickers. Let them know you heard about them from Sam. You'll get a discount. They sponsor the show, and they make amazing products. Well, guess what? Mike McLaughlin also sponsors the show, and you can look up him. Why do you want to? Because Mike McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, you can find him on Facebook, writes some of the most awesome fiction. He writes poetry. Maybe you don't like any of that. You're tuning into a political show right now. Guess what? He writes very insightful political rants uh, quite frequently. So do make sure that you go to uh, Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin, and enjoy. Friends, I mentioned this last Saturday, and I'm going to touch on it again on my show, and I'm going to let you know what I'm not saying and what this article is not saying. 
before the amount of hate mail that comes in here to my account looks like uh, a myriad of stacked over my head. Current name of prison planning. Gay rights may open the door for pedophile rights. Now, I am not saying that homosexuality is the same thing as pedophilia. I'm not saying that most gay people are pedophiles. I'm not saying anything like that. I happen to think that marriage is between one man and one woman. However, if a church chooses to marry two men, I don't have a problem with it. Did you hear that? I don't. I have a problem with you telling a church that they have to marry you. That I have a problem with. Um, the issue here, rather, and again, I, I'm no saint. I, I don't get into my private life beyond what I have to to keep my credibility. But I work in an adult club, and I love watching two women mess around. I have no problem with it whatsoever, okay? So I'm like every other red-blooded male. You can call it sinful, you can call it normal, but guess what? I'm going to be honest, okay? If I'm not honest, I, I, have, I have no credibility. The problem here is that pedophiles are saying that they are just like gay people. Listen to that again before you start hating me. I'm not saying it. Pedophiles are saying that they have a preference or they were born that way, just like gay people. That's going to be a huge problem because if it goes the way that homosexuality is gone, in 25 years, we're going to have it okay for adults to be sleeping with 10-year-olds. And uh, ask anybody that was alive in the 90s, I remember this little magazine, it was a little fanzine called Tab, way back before the internet. And uh, they were talking about how marijuana and homosexuality were going to be on the rise. And I remember thinking, that's insane, that'll never happen. Well, it did. Um, if it happened here, it would be a very substantial problem. It would be a very, very, very big problem because I do believe that pedophiles are born that way. I don't think they choose that. The trouble is, you can't have that happening. And again, I'm, I'm much more liberal than most people. If, if, you're, if you're an adult and you have sex with a 16-year-old and she's almost 17, you know what? Between you and the family, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think you need to spend the rest of your life in prison. I could definitely see you doing some time, or if her family wants you in prison, well, then you may be in it for a while, but I don't think your whole life should be ruined. Um, again, if it's many 16-year-olds here, then there's a problem. Have I ever done it? No. No, I've never, never, before you even say no. Um, I have no attraction there, thank God. But the problem with this is the direction that the pedophiles are going to take it. And their loyal lawyers will chip away and chip away and they will work and they will work until they are considered as normal as homosexuals and straight people do you understand that before you send me hate that is what this commentary piece is about so don't go telling me that you're gay and you don't like children and that I'm a homophobe because you missed the entire thing I just said if you do a recent Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage may soon allow pedophiles to argue that they are suffering discrimination. Using the same tactics used by gay rights activists, pedophiles have begun to seek similar status, arguing their desire for children is a sexual orientation that is no different from heterosexuals or homosexuals, writes Jack Minor for the Northern Colorado Gazette. Sound familiar? Minor? What a name. His name is Minor. I swear, his name is Jack Minor. That's, <laughs> you can't... <laughs> oh, God. Minor notes that psychiatrists are now beginning to advocate redefining pedophilia in the same way that homosexual, homosexuality was redefined several years ago. Homosexuality has long considered a mental illness. However, in 1973, the American Psychiatric Association declassified it from the list of mental disorders. More recently, a self-described organization of minor attracted people, the Before You Act, as in Before You Act from behind somebody, I'm not even going to go there, 
Before You Act held a symposium proposing a new definition of pedophilia in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders of the APA. And we all know that that, that, that entire thing is uh, about selling drugs to people. Before You Act and other pedophile advocacy organizations like NAMLA also cite the APA issued a report claiming, quote, the negative potential for adult sex with children was overstated and that the vast majority of men and women reported no negative sexual effects from childhood sexual abuse experiences. Notice he didn't even say consensual sex. Do I think a uh, 16-year-old having consensual sex with a 30-year-old is a good idea? Not really. Do I think that the 16-year-old, be it male or female, is going to be traumatized forever if it was consensual? No, I don't. This guy said abuse. In other words, it sounds like what ISIS said, that you would not ask to sleep with a child any more than you would ask a shoe for permission to wear it. You want the child, you take the child. That's what ISIS has literally said. It's damn close to what this idiot is saying. Okay, I'm sorry. If, if, if the 16-year-old is raped by a 30-year-old, that's probably going to have a rather negative sexual effect on her. Um, ridiculous. Male or female. I said her out of habit. In 2013, in California, Congresswoman uh, Representative Jackie Speer, a Democrat, proposed federalizing a state law to prohibit counseling to change a person's sexual orientation. The bill, according to critics, defines pedophilia as a sexual orientation and would afford the same rights granted to homosexuals. You still want to vote Democrat? This language is so broad and vague, it's arguably could include all forms of sexual orientation, including pedophilia, said Brad Dacus, president of the Pacific Justice Institute. It's not just the orientation that is protected. The conduct associated with their orientation should be protected as well. You know what that means? That means protecting having sex with children. And it, it makes me sick to think about it because I keep saying 16. What if the child's 12? Okay, there's a problem here. There's a huge problem here that has nothing to do with adult homosexuals. Are you seeing that yet? Democrats defeated an amendment by Republicans that stated that pedophilia is co not covered as an orientation. A Florida Democrat, rep uh, Representative Elsie Hastings, said that all alternative sexual lifestyles should be protected under the law. Well, ain't that just so accepting? you understand what I'm commentating on? Do you, do you get it? In 2014, the New York Times argued in favor of civil rights for pedophiles. Margot Kaplan, an entrepreneurial assistant law professor at Rutgers University and a former lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, wrote for the newspaper that around 1% of people sexually are attracted to children and must hide their disorder from everyone they know or risk losing educational and job opportunities and face the prospect of harassment or even violence. You know what? If you like children like that, then maybe you should, in fact, be barred from working in the daycare center. I am just going to throw it out there. Um, I bite my nails. Guess what? I probably should not have a job as a hand model. Okay, I was born a very high-strung person. They're born pedophiles. That's an awful comparison I've just given myself. But you get what I'm saying. There, Anybody that's got some mental quirk probably should not be working in certain fields. It is essentially the same argument that's used in mainstream homosexuality. And unfortunately, that is true. Gay people, I'm not attacking you. I'm simply pointing out that it is. In point of fact... All of the principal arguments commonly used to normalize homosexuality have been used to normalize pedophilia and pedestry, writes Michael Brown. Jerome Corsi, of course, writing for WND, you should go there if, uh, as soon as you're done listening, is concerned pedophilia will become the next sexual rights revolution. Corsi points out that normalizing the sexual pathology that occurred following research by Alfred Kinsey and the Kinsey Institute into sexual variations. So your kids are just variants now. 
Corzai cites Judith Reisman in her 2010 book uh, called Sexual Sabotage. Our laws are no longer based on Judeo-Christian morality, but on Kinsey's immoral morality. An adulterous, fornicating, aborting, pornography-addicted, masturbating, impotent, sadistic, masochistic, bisexual, homosexual, exhibitionist, voyeuristic, and child sexual abusive world. You know what? Some of those sins that were listed in that are mine, too. But the difference is, I'm not out here asking the whole world to accept it. Okay? This is sick. This is really, really messed up. And yet, somehow, it's just going to get lost in the videos I do. I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure of it. It's the most amazing, disruptive thing, I think, ever. And I hope I've given you all some food for thought here, because it's quite disturbing. It really is not a road we want to go on. And that, friends, you know what it does, don't you? At least I hope you know what it does. It does, in fact, bring us to, where's my music? The Dumb D of the Day. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, once a day at the end of the show, always the Dumb D of the Day. The dumbest, stupidest article I could find closes every show and there's of course the dunce cap of the month that comes out i'll be doing that show next week might be a tad shorter due to some computer problems um but I, it'll be there the dunce cap of the month award we send out dunce caps we make out dunce cap certificates um and christelle and i we ain't afraid of anything my behind the scenes queen who really worked much harder than you're able to see right now she got hosed i'll get to it at the end of the show um it's, it's, it's all over. Dumb D's are everywhere. So we send dunce caps everywhere. We send them to the White House. We send them to the FBI. We send them to the Army. Why? They earned it. Okay, the FBI, for instance, tried to call ICP a gang. Gang leaders, their fans, juggalos, people that like a horror movie rap, who were considered a gang. So I, we sent them a dunce cap. And you know what? Christelle and I don't take it back. And if they ask us if we sent them a dump, dunce cap, you're damn straight I'm going to say we did. Well, this is who wins the dumb D of the day. Uh, not dumb enough to get a dunce cap, but definitely dumb enough to be mentioned. Officials, students' gender identity dis determines restroom use. Let me tell you what. If you were born with a Y chromosome, you're a guy. How about that? If you get your schlong cut off, that does not make you a woman. It makes you a mutilated guy. Now, I don't have a problem with you getting your schlong cut off if that's something that's going to bring you joy in your life. And many times it doesn't. That's important to know. You think it's going to be okay, and then you do it, and you still don't feel any better because the problem is in your head. But in any event, gender-neutral bathrooms, I don't have a problem with it. Unisex bathrooms, I don't have a problem with it. But this notion that we need to get rid of every every norm in order to kiss homosexual ass is for the birds. And don't tell me they don't have a choice. Unless it's rape, all sex is a choice. If you choose to sleep with a man, and you are a man, and me as a guy, I choose to sleep with a woman. We have made the same choice. So don't tell me that homosexuality is not a choice, because all sex is a choice, unless you're being raped. Which Democrats only want to happen to children? Not all Democrats. Associated Press. Dumb the other day, the U.S. Justice Department says in a court filing that transgender students must be allowed to use the restroom that corresponds with their gender identity. If you have a Y chromosome, you're a guy. Eat it. Well, no, they may. Never mind. The department says in a statement of interest filed Monday that failure to do so amounts to sex discrimination. Under Title IX of the U.S. Education Amendments of 72, the document, in a response to a federal lawsuit filed against uh, Gloucester County School Board by a 16-year-old transgender student who wanted to be allowed to use the boys' restroom. The lawsuit says Gavin Grimm used the communal restrooms without incident until the board adopted a policy in December requiring transgender students to use a private facility. That is perfectly legal. We've already given them their own bathroom, which is far too much capitulation for me. How far do you want us to bend? The lawsuit seeks unspecified damages in an order allowing Grimm to use the boys' restroom. That, friends, if you can't figure out why I got the dumb the other day, they don't even know how you found the show. Um, and again... 
I make lifestyle decisions that many people would not find to be morally sound. That's fine. I'm not out here asking for my own bathroom. I'm not asking for you to accept it. And I'm definitely not out here promoting that anybody needs to do anything that I've done or haven't done. That is the difference. And that's the correct view. Friends, you're listening to Sam uh, DeGangi of The Correct Views, member of The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time. If you want to donate to the show, that would be great. Uh, the Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, or at least we try. Uh, you probably can't see them. I've got cables everywhere. I have a TV behind me. Um, I've got donations. How you doing, Angela? I got donations. Everything is hooked up properly, and it still doesn't want to work. So we're, we're still working on it. But suffice to say, every penny you give to us does go towards a better show. And um, help us. Help us keep doing it, and uh, keep doing it we will. Good night, friends. God bless.